All right, lesson 22, the generator effect. Okay, so Michael or electromagnetic induction, which is uh, another Michael Faraday um, discovery. And yeah, you guys have probably seen that from the last lesson and this lesson. This Michael Faraday is kind of a big deal. Um, so up until now, what he just um, discovered, right, was in, in our last lesson was the motor, right? He was able to figure out how to take electricity and turn that into constant motion, right? And he started, that, that got him thinking, right, is that if you can have a, um, you know, a, a magnetic field that's uh, reacting to um, electricity, then maybe the opposite's true, right? He actually thought maybe we can just do it the other way around, right? Maybe we can actually go from motion and get out electrical energy. So that's what this lesson is going to be about. It's kind of like the, it's the flip. So the last one was like the motor effect. Now we're doing the generator effect. So it's like two sides of the same coin, really. So here's, here's what he did. So um, by something called electromagnetic induction, um, he was able to show the generator effect. And here's the experiment that Michael Faraday did. He <clears throat> took a, a battery, right? So that's a, that's a battery there. And wrapped it around um, a iron ring, right? So a conductor. And, you know, so wrapping it around. We know that when you're wrapping an elect, um, like a wire with electricity through it, around, well, it doesn't even have to be around anything. It's just that's going to be a solenoid, just a coil of wire. Then what will happen there is you, you induce a magnetic field, right? That was that second hand rule. We can we could actually tell which way the north pole of this of this uh, magnetic field would be based on our second hand rule. Okay, so he did that, and then he noticed that something weird happened. Is that when he had this switch open? Well, well, sorry, I'll, I'll finish explaining the other half of this. So on the other half of this, he had just a wire wrapped around on the other side of this ring. And then it was hooked up to a galvanometer, which really just measures um, small amounts of current. Okay, so now this side is just wire and a galvanometer, right? So there, this galvanometer really shouldn't read anything. <clears throat> but what he noticed was that when he closed the circuit, right? So when he, when he actually allowed the electricity to flow through this coil of wire around here, then it would, what would happen on this galvanometer is that the needle would spike. So you'd have a needle and then it would all of a sudden spike sideways. It would like go, it would give you a current and then go back to zero again. But it was only when you, when he closed the circuit, it would just spike for a second and then come back down again. Right? So as soon as it was actually like a continuous circuit where electricity was flowing through, you know, this and around again, you got nothing. Right? It was, it was a strange thing that it was only when he closed the circuit and then actually when he opened the circuit, the same thing, it would actually happen again. So it just, it was like that second, right? When he closed it, right? When he opened it. So what was happening there, right? And the idea is that in order to create an electric or um, current, current flow, what is required is a changing magnetic field. And why that was shown in his experiment was that when he went from having zero current, right, to all of a sudden having it closed and then he had, um, and then he gave it current, well, then that would make it a changing magnetic field because it went from having, you know, zero uh, uh, current to having some current. So it went from having zero magnetic field to having some magnetic field. Okay, so I know it's a little bit confusing, but what what the idea here was so just with this this picture again what what kind of happened here <clears throat> is that you can imagine when electricity is flowing through this thing that let's say that that ends up making this the north pole and that the south pole right of this of this coil of wire we have going on here well why this is called induction is because we're able to induce a field into this one so let's let's draw some field lines we know that that if you have a magnet that the field lines would go around, right? And then back down to the south. So they go like around and back down to the south. So the, this field, it would happen on both sides, right? But <clears throat> this field that's being created here, right? This magnetic field is being pushed through this coil of wire, right? So we have this magnetic field going through this, this coil of wire. Well, if you have a magnetic field going through a coil of wire, that's actually going to induce a current through it. Right? So that's what's happening there. It's like the magnetic field from this guy 
is inducing a current in this guy, but nothing will happen, right? Like you won't get a current if you just have a, like a static magnetic field just sitting there, right? If it's not changing, nothing happens. It has to be like right when, you know, you change the magnetic field that you end up getting a current going through there. Okay. So, so that was ex his experiment. And actually it turned out that the, uh, that the, uh, iron ring wasn't even necessary. This would actually happen without the ring, right? If you just had a coil of wires and then a coil of wires on this side, you'd actually get the same effect happening. All right. So hopefully I know it's a little bit confusing, but this lesson in general, I find can be like a little bit of tough of a conceptual one sometimes, but so here's, here's what he did. So he did, he, he uh, showed this in three different ways. One way was moving a wire through the jaws of a horseshoe magnet. So here, um, that example, I'll show you what I mean by that down here. That would be this example that I'm going to get to in a minute, <clears throat> where if you had a horseshoe magnet, a horseshoe magnet would just have like, you know, a North pole here and a South pole there. Right. And he, what he would do is he could pull the wire upward just physically, right? He used his hand and he actually pull it upward. And if, when he pulled that upward, he would actually sh show that there would be a current that would flow through the wire just by pulling the wire upward in, in a magnetic field. And that happens because it's being pulled up in a, it's changing, right? When you, when he's pulling it through that magnetic field, that magnetic field essentially is changing, right? So that's going to induce a current through the wire. Okay. So that was that one. He also did this. He plunged a bar magnet in and out of a uh, solenoid. So that one, I actually have a little gizmo that shows that one. So what he did was exactly this, where he had a bar magnet and a coil of wires. And what happens is that when he, he moves this in here, so changing the magnetic field, right? The magnetic field would actually be changing on this guy. Then, and, and here, I'll show the field lines, right? This is the field lines of the magnet. So the field that's actually inside this coil of wires is changing when I'm moving it, right? So what that's gonna do is that's gonna induce a current through those coils of wire, right? Just like using your second hand rule, you can figure out which way, well, we will in a second, I'll show you how to figure out which way it's going. But, but yeah, that's the idea. So I can go back and forth and you end up like getting, well, maybe I'll jump to the point here. You actually end up getting alternating current, don't you? You see that needle up in the top left, how it's going like negative and then positive, negative and then positive. This is actually how your house wiring works, right? Like you, you have alternating current in your house. So a little hint here, the way that electricity is produced that gets to your house has something to do with this, right? That's how it's produced. It's going to be like something going back and forth that's creating that alternating current, right? Going back and forth like that. Okay. So that was the second one he did, plunging a bar magnet into a solenoid, right? And showing that you end up getting current from that. Um, the other one, touching the iron core of a coil with a bar magnet and then removing the magnet. So yeah, the, that one, yeah, it's going to be similar to the ones above there, but we're going to focus mostly on the, on the top two here. So, okay, a little bit of review here now. This example here is what we had done before, like in the last lesson, right? So just as a little bit of review here, um, actually, you know what? I'm not going to get into that yet. I talk about how to figure it out later, but can you guys see that these are just exactly like two sides of the same coin? This one was our motor effect, right? That was from the last lesson. And that was if you had current or electron flow in this case, going this way through the wire, then the force on the wire, it would make the wire move upward, right? So in that case, you've got electricity that's causing motion, right? So that's a, that's a generator, right? You've got, or sorry, that's a motor. You've got electricity creating motion. That's what a motor does, right? And then in the other example, in this one, the one we're just learning now, it's the, it's the flip where instead of the force being upward in the end, what we're doing here is we're pulling the wire upward and that is inducing a electron flow in the, in the wire. Okay. So exact like two sides of the same coin. They're like, they really are the same principle just in reverse. Okay. Now lens is law. So this one can get a little bit confusing, but we'll, we'll go step by step here. So <clears throat> here, here is what lens um, figured out about this. He said, here's lens's law right here. He said, 
An induced current flows in such a direction that the induced magnetic field it creates opposes the action of the inducing magnetic field. All right, that, that sounds like nonsense, right? Like, <laughs> I don't even, it, like, like I know what it means, right? But it's, it's, hard, to, it's hard to actually figure out what, what he's talking about there. It's a little bit easier when we actually just talk about what would happen right here. So here, here's what this is saying, is that if I have a bar magnet, right, and I'm plunging it towards a solenoid, it doesn't need to be wrapped around a bar or anything like that, right? It could be just like my, uh, my picture here, right? It'd be, it'd be this example, right, is what, is what we're talking about there. Okay, so if I've got that situation, what he's saying is that, so when I plunge this in like towards this one, so this comes toward here, what that's going to do, right? This thing is giving off its own magnetic field as it's coming towards it, right? Well, that magnetic field will then induce a, uh, a current through this wire, right? It's going to induce a current through that wire. Well, that current that's been induced in that wire is going to make its own magnetic field, right? It's going to, it's going to create its own magnetic field with its own north and south pole, right? So what he says, and, and maybe, just, maybe I'll say that one more time because I know that's confusing. So, okay. If you've got this magnetic field, right, with, a, with its own, or this magnet with its own magnetic field, you know, and I move it toward this coil of wires, well, I have a changing magnetic field, right, because it's moving, it's moving toward this thing, so it's changing, and it is going to induce a current in the wire, right? It's, so it's gonna, it's gonna make a current go through that wire, right? Well, once I have a current going through a wire, well, that thing is going to end up making its own magnetic field, right? So that would end up making, like, you know, maybe this a North Pole and that a South Pole. We could use our second hand rule to figure out which one it was, right? But, but that is what's going to happen. So what Lenz's law is, is him, him saying what side of this thing is going to end up being North and which will end up being South. So he says that an induced current in, in such a direction, or sorry, an induced cur current flows in such a direction that the induced magnetic field it creates opposes the action of the inducing magnetic field. What that means is that the magnetic field that's gonna be created by this guy will oppose the motion of this guy. Okay, so I kinda said a mouthful there, but really in the end, what that would mean is if I'm plunging this bar magnet toward this, it's going to oppose that motion so what that means is that this must be a north pole of that magnet, and that would be the south pole, because I know that north poles, like two of the same, repel, right? So it's going to oppose that motion. So it's going to push that towards that. That would end up making this a north pole. And then from there, what we can do is I can say, okay, now that I know that this is a north pole, and if it says, um, it says, in, uh, which one, which end of this thing, if I have current flow, you know, so which way would the, would the current go from like B to A or from A to B? Well, if it's current flow, I can use my right hand, right, for current. And I know that I'm going to point my thumb towards the north. So you guys should be doing this right now too, right? So see if you can use your second hand rule to wrap your fingers, right? Your fingers would wrap around this way, right? Wrapping around this thing and your thumb should be pointing to the north. And if you do that, you can see that if your fingers are wrapping around that way, that the current flow would be from A to B, right? Your fingers are wrapping around the back side of this thing, if that makes sense, okay? And then once we know that, then we can figure out everything else. It says, um, which end will be positive? Okay, well, it'll, it'll be B would be positive, right? Because you can imagine, you could think about it this way that you've got like the positives are all moving toward B, but that's not really what's happening. It's all the negatives that are moving toward A, but you, you can think about it. It actually works either way, but, but we know what's actually happening, right? Okay. So, so I know that that's a tough concept. I'm, I'm going to do a bunch of examples here and, and talk about the same thing. So, okay. So every, yeah, re, read through this guys. I, I, um, that was everything I just explained up top, right? They're just talking about, you know, what, what's ha what's happening there. So it's good if you didn't understand that to read through this and, and try to make sense of it yourself too. Let's look at this example though too, right? Because the first example was plunging the bar magnet toward the coil. 
Now what they're doing is we're pulling it away, right? So now we're going to pull it away. Well, same thing though. It's going to be the same idea, but now it's actually the pole that on this magnetic field is going to be switched, right? This thing will be switched around because it's going to, what did Len say? He said that it, it will oppose the action, right? It's going to oppose the action. Okay. Well, if I'm pulling this thing this way, if it's opposing the action, what that would make this, that would make this a south pole because north and south attract, right? So if I'm pulling that thing away, it's like I'm pulling them apart. It's opposing the action. Okay. So that's what they're saying there. So that would make that a south pole and that a north pole. You know, one way I, re I remember this to, to figure out which one's going to be north and which one's going to be south is I often think about like a plunger, right? Like an actual like toilet plunger. So if I was like plunging right here, maybe I'll even go to here. If I was plunging like, like toward this thing, right? With the toilet plunger. Well, when I'm pushing in, right, it's going to repel against me. And when I'm pulling out, it's going to suction like back to it. Right. So that's almost what it is. It's like, it's, it's like, you know, you're plunging in and then plunging out. So it's like repelling against you and then repelling away from you. Right. As you're plunging back and forth there. Okay. So anyway, so this would be a South pole and that'd be a North pole being created by this magnet. I say, well, what, what will be the resulting electron flow? Okay. So that's left hand for the following system. Okay. So I'm using my left hand. My thumb is pointing toward the North. Okay. Well, what that would be my, my fingers, if you guys are doing this right, your fingers should be like wrapping around the back of this guy with your left hand. Right. So then that would make your electron flow going from A to B. Okay, all the electrons are like moving this way around that thing. And they would all be collecting down here. You'd have more electrons all collecting on this B, uh, like on the end here. If, if this is all you had, if you just had like a wire that started there and ended there, right? If, if you, you know, made it attached to a light bulb or something that would, that'd be, it would light the light bulb for like a second. Okay. So that's the idea. All right. Now, so that, that's a, uh, for you, for solenoids there, that's that type of question with the, uh, yeah, figuring those ones out. Now, what we're going to do, if we're, if we're talking about this type of a situation where we have like a wire that we are going to like pull upward and we want to figure out whether or not the current is going this way or whether it's going that way. Well, what we're going to do here, do you remember our third hand rule, right? Our third, here, you know what? I'm going to go back here and remind you guys what the third hand rule is. So the third hand rule would be what we would do like in this situation. Okay. So in this situation, remember we, we say, okay, it's electron flow because I have an E there. So I'm going to use my left hand, your thumb pointed in the direction of the velocity of the like electrons. So this could be like uh, electron flow, or this could be like an individual negative particle, right? It'd be the same thing. So your thumb would point that direction. Your fingers would point from North to South. And then if you're doing this correctly, your palm should be pointing upward, right? So the force would be pointing upward. Okay. So what we're going to do though, is we are going to, um, make a more general rule for this, this is like the, the combined hand rule, which is that instead of it always being my thumb goes in the direction of the electron flow, what I'm going to think about this instead is input versus output. So like in this example, my input was my electrons flowing that direction and my output was my palm and it was going, and it was being forced upward, right? My fingers would be always from North to South, right? For the magnetic field. But my input is my thumb, right? The thing going in is my thumb and my output, the thing happening is, is my palm pointing upward in that case, right? Okay, so why that's going to be useful is because we can use that same idea now for the new example. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to say um, the input, right? What we're doing is going to be actually pulling the wire upward. So now our thumb should be pointing upward. Our fingers would be pointing still north to south. But now if you're doing this correctly with your left hand, um, your palm should be pointing down like this way. So it should like the, the electron flow should be coming down the wire. Okay. So that's, that's the, the combined hand rule. So you got, you can use that all the time now, right? That's going to be the, the new one that we use for, for these. Okay.
<clears throat> I'll, do, I'll do some examples here too, like when we do the, those ones. Okay, new formula. So now that we have, we have um, an induced current, we have like current flowing down the wire. Well, well, V is equal to I over R. And so voltage is equal to current times resistance. Um, well, there is resistance in that wire, right? So if I've got an induced current, I have a voltage. There just, there is, right? There's gonna be a voltage when you have um, like a current, like, like moving from one place to another, you're gonna have a potential difference there or an electromotive force, right? The, the, the same thing. There's lots of names for, for potential difference or voltage, right? Um, if you guys see this though, when you're doing it, electromotive force, that, that also means uh, voltage, okay? Or potential difference. Okay, so now just a new formula. It's actually similar to other ones we've done. So it's gonna be magnetic field times the speed of the conductor. So in this case, that's gonna be the speed I'm actually moving it, right? So in the last one, that's gonna be how fast did you actually like pluck this upward, right? You can say you moved it up at like three meters per second, right? So that would be your velocity. And then L will be the length of your wire. And then again, sine theta is gonna be the angle that you pull it at, okay? So I think, I think you guys will be fine with those. So um, I'm not gonna spend too much time on those. And then this last part, I've kind of talked about this already. This is just really saying that electric generators really are the, the, the inverse of motors, right? They're the same principle, just working in reverse. Um, before we keep going though, I just wanna talk a little bit about how, how, how most AC generators actually work, right? So if you were getting your energy from coal or, or um, like a hydro dam or anything else, all that's really happening there is that they would have, they do something similar to this, right? So in this example, I've got this bar magnet that you know you can plunge back and forth. And what will happen is you can see like up here, like with the positive and negative, that it's going back and forth, right? That's my, if you did it fast enough, your light would stay constant. It wouldn't flicker on and off because it's happening so fast. But a real um, generator, what, what they do instead, instead of having the bar magnet be the thing plunging back and forth, what they would what they would have instead is you'd have a you'd have a like a north pole up here and like a south pole down here right you'd have like pretty much the uh, like a horseshoe magnet type of a thing and then what they do instead is they'd have this coil of wires rotating right you rotate a coil of wires in the middle of a magnetic field well, the same thing's gonna happen. That's gonna be a changing magnetic field and you have the same result where you'd be going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And that's what that alternating current is. That's the current that we, that we use for, uh, for um, transmission lines, right? Getting the power to your house and then your lights and everything else, they all run on AC power. Now, DC power, direct current, right? That's gonna be powering things like your computers, right? Those things, those things don't work with this like, this like back and forth um, type of a type of a voltage, right? Where it's like voltage, like negative voltage, positive voltage, negative voltage, positive voltage. Your computer doesn't like that, right? Your computer would work on more of like a just a battery situation where it just starts at, at the negative and goes to the positive, right? Just one direction. Okay. I want to talk about that because really in high school, you guys don't learn much about AC power in any of the courses you take, which is I find strange because that really is what, what like house wiring and everything would be based on, right? So, okay. So let's do practice problems here. So which end will become negatively charged, A or B in this situation? So A or, or A or B there, okay? So using, this is Lenz's law, right? So it's going to oppose the motion. Well, that would make that a north pole if it's gonna oppose the motion, and that my south pole, okay? So now that I know that, now I can start using my hands, right? Well, it becomes, which one becomes negatively charged? That's probably gonna be easier to think about this if I use my left hand, because then I can see which way the electrons are going, right? So I'm gonna have my thumb pointing toward the north. Your fingers then should be wrapped around the back side of this thing, right, if you're doing this right. So then what, what would happen there is you can say, okay, well, they're moving from A and they're ending up on B, so that all these electrons would all end up uh, on the end of B. So B would end up being negatively charged there. Okay, determine the direction of the induced current for the following coil. 
is A positive or negative? So let's do the current one first. So it's gonna oppose the motion. Okay, so if I'm pulling this thing away, then the then opposing it would be as if this was a south pole, right? That's gonna be, they're, they're gonna to wanna to be stuck together, but I'm pulling it apart. Okay, so that's south and that's north. All right, now that I know that, it's current, so I'm using my right hand. Okay, so I'm using my right hand. So if you're using your right hand there, what you should have is that your fingers should be wrapping over the top of this guy, right? Like you're, like, like I'm picturing right now, like my index finger is, uh, is uh, wrapping over top of, the, of this side right there. And then you can picture your, your fingers wrapping around that direction, right? So if that's the case, then uh, determine the direction of the induced current. So current is from A to B. All right, so now it says, is A positive or negative? Okay, so this one, I'm gonna mess with your brain, I guess. Um, so what's happening here, the current, right? So this would be like all of the positives are moving around this way and all the positives are ending up there. Now, again, that's not actually what happens, but you can think about it that way. It actually works out in the end that that would make this a negative side, right? You could also do your, use your left hand to figure out which way your, uh, which way your electrons would go. And if you did that, you'd end up seeing that like using your left hand, all the electrons would be moving this way, right? Around and then ending up on A. All right, three. Determine the pole of the bar magnet that is being inserted um, into the illustrated induction coil. All right, so they're, they're wondering what, what pole this is. And what we've been given is that, well, we see the symbol I, that means current, right? So what that's telling us is that we're using our right hand. Okay, so if we're using our right hand, our fingers would wrap around the back of this guy, right? So your hand, your your palm should be facing your face if you're doing this right, when you're doing this. And then your fingers would wrap around, like your fingers would wrap around the top there, okay? Which would make your thumb pointing this way. So that ends up making this your North Pole. Okay, well, if that's my North Pole, then that's my South Pole. And then, again, it's, it's always gonna oppose the motion. So if I'm pushing this thing forward, and I know that this thing ended up being a south pole, then that means this must have also been the south pole, making that a north pole, right? Because I would oppose the motion pushing it in there. All right, number four, which end of the conductor will become negative? All right, so uh, what is the direction of the current flow? So they're really trying to mess this up here. Okay, so which, which end of the conductor will become negative? So I'm going to use my left hand so I, I can picture the electrons moving here, like which way would they go. So our new combined hand rule is that we use our thumb. Our thumb points um, in the direction of the input. And in this case, the input is pulling the wire downward, right? So our thumb should be pointing down. Our fingers should always be pointed north to south either way. And if you're doing this right, you should end up having your palm with your left hand pushing that way, like into the page or up toward A there, right? So if that's the case, right, and I'm using my left hand, that means all of my electrons, right, all my negatives would be, all be pushed down to the end of this guy. So my A would, be the, would become negative. And it says, what's the direction of the current flow? Well, okay, so if that was the direction of the electron flow was that way, well, then the current flow would be that way. And just to make sure if you wanted to, you could also use your right hand, right? Let's do the same thing with our right hand. If your fingers are pointing north to south and your thumb is pointing down, if you're using your right hand, your palm should in fact be pointed that way. So it'd be from A to B. All right, number five, which way will the electrons flow in the circuit below? So what's, what's happening here is that we've got some like piece of maybe copper or something right here and this is going to be like a bare wire on either side of this thing so what's happening there is that is that um we're going to move this wire in this magnetic field right these these x's mean that the magnetic field is going into the page there so we're going to move this wire in this magnetic field keeping contact you know on our wire the whole time and they're saying so what should happen there is we should end up driving or inducing a current you know that way or the other way, right? Just based, and we'll have to use our hand rule to figure this out. So it says, which way will the electrons flow? 
Okay, so that's my left hand. Now the input is gonna be the direction I'm moving the wire. Okay, so I'm moving the wire to the right there. So your, your thumb should be pointing to the right. Your fingers, right, should be pointed into the page because the, this magnetic field is into the page right now, which would make, and if you're doing this right, your palm should be pointed downward at this point. Okay, so if your palm is pointed downward, that's the direction that we're driving these electrons around this circuit, right? So we've created that. So hopefully that made sense. Okay, number six can be very similar. They're saying which end of the conductor will become negative. Um, okay, so now the magnetic field, we've got the little dots, that's like the head of the arrow coming out of the page. So your fingers should be pointing out of the page. I'm gonna use my left hand because it's negative still. My thumb should be pointing in the direction that I'm moving it, which makes my palm pointing down. So that means that the electrons in this wire would all be driven or induced, like I'd induce a current downward, right? Making all those, the bottom of this thing, negatively charged. Okay, number seven. What's the voltage generated when a 50 centimeter wire passes through a six Tesla field? at 30 degrees to the field with a speed of 30 meters per second. Okay, so this is just our new formula. So this is just voltage is equal to B times V times L times sine theta, All right? And that's on your formula sheet. Um, and then just really this one's just filling it in. I think you guys will be fine with this, right? So this would be V is equal to our magnetic field is six. Um, not, not lower T, it'd be capital T six Teslas times a speed of 30 meters per second and a length of 0 0.5 meters, that's the meters, and then sine uh, 30 degrees. Okay, and all that should be 45 volts. All right, now, number eight, last one. So this one's just a combination of the two, where I just have to do uh, like, so it's saying um, you got a conducting rod in the diagram is 15 centimeters long and is moving at a speed of four meters per second, perpendicular to the three or 0.3 Tesla magnetic field. The conducting rod slides across two wires, which form a circuit. If the resistance in the circuit is four ohms, what is the magnitude and direction of the current through the circuit? All right, so we haven't really talked about ohms this lesson, but Really, we've got a simple formula for this, right? So as soon as I see this, I'm like, oh yeah, V is equal to current times resistance, right? And, and resistance is measured in ohms. So they're asking me for what's the current through the circuit? So it's asking me for I. Well, that works out because our new formula is for V, right? So if I figure out V, I can solve for I pretty easily there. So we're gonna use our new voltage formula. So V is equal to B times V um, L sine theta. So our voltage would be, uh, our B was 0 0.3 Teslas. Our speed that we were moving it was four, four meters per second. Our length of our wire would be 0 0.15 meters. And it says it's perpendicular. So what that tells me is I didn't even need the sine theta part, right? Because sine of 90 degrees is just one. So that, that's fine, I just leave it like that, right? Okay, so that's the case. So there, should we actually figure it out? <laughs> yeah, let's do it. Okay, so that's gonna be 0.3 times four times 0.15. All right, so I get a voltage of 0 0.18 volts. Okay, but then it asks for uh, it asks for current though, right? So rearranging this formula, we just get I is equal to voltage over resistance. So that's gonna be equal to the voltage we just found, 0 0.18 volts divided by the resistance that they, they gave us. So four ohms, okay? So that should be our answer here. <laughs> I'll cheat, 0 0.045 amps. All right, but then the second part of this question, the second part of this question says, so what's the magnitude 
and the direction, right? So this is just like what we did before. So now what I'm doing is just figuring out which way that, so I'm moving this thing this way, All right? Then what's gonna happen is it's either gonna create it going around like this way, like clockwise, or it's gonna make it counterclockwise. Whoop, my computer's gonna die, one sec. Made it. All right, <laughs> I think, yeah, I think we're good. All right, so it's either gonna be that way or the other way, right? So we're gonna use our new hand rule, our combined hand rule, where, okay, so these are dots, so that means my fingers should be pointing straight up in the air, right? They're pointing out of the page. My thumb should be pointing to the right, because that's my input. And if you're doing this correctly, oh, sorry, it says direction of current. Okay, I had the wrong hand there. Um, so if you're doing this correctly with your right hand, because we're talking about current, then fingers pointing up, thumb pointing to the right. Okay, well, what that would do, that would make it drive downward. Your current is going to be going around that way. So it's going to be clockwise, right? So you'd say that many and then clockwise. I know you guys don't really use analog clocks anymore. Maybe that'll be confusing. So try to figure out which, what, what clockwise and counterclockwise are. <laughs> I think it'd be fine though. All right, so that's it. So just the handing assignment next.